Welcome to Everyday Linux user. In today's video, we're comparing Lubuntu with Q4OS Trinity to see which of the lightweight distros is the best for the everyday Linux user. Now, this is Lubuntu and it's currently idling around 1.36 gigabytes. Now, generally speaking, when you first start up, it's around about the 950 megabyte mark. I am recording video and I am running this system info tool here. So that's adding a little bit of memory usage, but you can say about 950, 960 megabytes. So if we close that down, uh, the machine I am using for this comparison uh, is as follows. And you can see it's an Intel Celeron N4000, one physical process, two cores, three threads, four gigabytes of RAM, and it's a very low end mini PC. Now, if you've got a very old computer, like an old laptop, or you've got one of these really cheap mini PCs, then Lubuntu is perfect for this sort of device. Hardware all works, and LXQt is a really nice lightweight desktop environment. It's easy to navigate. You can see here, you just go into your menu here, and you can go through any one of the sections, or you can search for the application you want. So if I want the Falcon web browser, just type Falcon and it's there, or I could go into internet, and you can see Falcon's there as well. So Lubuntu is based on Ubuntu, and therefore you get the base Ubuntu packages, and you get LXQt as a desktop environment over the top. Now what that means is your system is going to be stable, uh, but you get a really lightweight desktop instead of the normal heavy GNOME desktop that you would normally get with Ubuntu. So when it comes to installing packages, Lubuntu gives you two options. You can either use Synaptic, which is a lightweight package manager. Now, for some people, this won't be the best interface you've ever seen in your life, and it's not particularly easy to navigate. But say I want to just install something like a Tetris game, I can search for Tetris. And you get a list of Tetris style games. So if, it, for instance, I want that one, I just mark for installation, click mark, and then click apply and then apply again. And that's it, it's now going to install that package and you can see it's downloading the file and now it's installing the software. Easy. And if you want to find that piece of software, you go to games and there it is, block out two. And you can play that game. Now, obviously, you're not going to be playing Steam games or to play titles on this sort of machine. But if you want to do basic gaming like Solitaire and stuff like that, that is available to you. Now, the other package manager you can use is called Discover. Now, this is a weird choice for Lubuntu because uh, Discover normally comes with KDE, but because LXQt is Qt based and uh, KDE runs Qt programs, that's why Discover is probably installed, but you can see it's quite slow loading. Now, the benefits of using something like Discover, uh, it's a much nicer program to use when it's when you're looking for something to install. So for instance, if we were looking at games and we look at Super Tux, you click into it and it'll give you a screenshot. And then you can look at reviews, read about what it is you're installing. And to install, all you have to do is click install from up here. And that's it, installing. You have to enter your password. And that's it, you can launch it from here as well. Now, the other thing about Discover is if you wanted to, you can go into settings and because this is Ubuntu based, you can enable Snap and you can install Flatpak to set Flatpaks up as well. Now, because this is an older machine or is a low spec machine, is it recommended to enable Snaps and Flatpaks because they 
they are larger in size and they do run a little bit slower than native Debian packages. So that's for you to decide. You can enable them. You can always disable the game or just not install snaps if you want to go down that route. But just know that it's going to add more memory usage to your experience. So it does make it easier to install certain packages. So say you wanted Spotify, you could install um, Flatpak, you can install Snap and then just search for Spotify. If Installing Snap should be kept um, at a premium, really. You shouldn't really install them on such an old system. You're better off with native Debian packages. So we'll close that and let's see if we can get that game working. We'll just see how well this performs. Helps if I hit the jump key, doesn't it? I normally play with a joystick on this game if I'm playing it. I don't normally use the keyboard. I haven't got one plugged in at this moment in time. But you can see this plays okay. So if you've got an old machine, and you want to play games, then it is possible to do so. But just know you're not going to be playing the top titles, but there's definitely casual gaming to be played. Applications that are installed by default with Lubuntu, you get quite a lot of stuff installed. So you get the LXQt file manager, PCFM file manager, <laughs> you get a calculator, um, Obviously, you've seen me install both these games, uh, but you've got this one installed by default. Uh, an image tool. Now, I installed GIMP. Uh, you get LibreOffice. Uh, now, Firefox is the default browser, but I installed Falcon. So I recommend if you install any lightweight distro, you install the Falcon uh, web browser. It's uh, a lightweight version, and it still works as well as the others, but it doesn't take as much memory. Uh, LibreOffice. Uh, Caden Live I installed, uh, OpenShot I installed, I was messing around with video editing. Uh, so the only one you get really is VLC I think and that's about it. What I would say about Lubuntu over Q4 OS is the desktop feels, even though it's um, lightweight, it feels like it's still being updated and it's still worked on, it's still receiving all the love and attention that it should receive and it's being brought up to the 21st century standard it's getting Wayland support uh, so it's still going to be lightweight and it's still going to work but um, is one that's going to be there going on and on and on when it comes to Q4 OS and the Trinity desktop uh, I think the Trinity desktop might not be around um, in 10 years time or even 5 years time Q4 OS are definitely going in the direction of the KDE desktop as the primary one and uh, if you go onto their website you'll see that it um, has the KDE desktop as the main one and then Trinity is the secondary one and uh, so let's switch over to Q4 OS Trinity now so this is Q4 OS Trinity so this is the lightweight version of Q4 OS and if we go for H top here, you can see the memory is 820, 807 megabytes. Without simple screen recorder, I can confirm it's 655. So it's a lot lighter than Lubuntu um, from the outset. Well, even though Lubuntu is light itself. So same hardware as before. And uh, the thing with the Trinity desktop is it's still made to look like Windows XP, Windows 7-esque. And I find this a little bit annoying. So you've got the whole my computer thing going on here. And uh, it's used, used Conqueror as the file manager for this. So you go into my computer. If you want to go to home folder, you've got to go into there and then down. And then you can go up again. You've got my documents, you just take you to your documents. 
you can see I've got no documents in there at this moment in time. But if I want my music, I have to go up a folder like that. And then you've got my network places here. And then so if you've got any network shares, they'd be in here. When it comes to hardware support, uh, so Wi-Fi, that's available. There. Um, so you can easily connect to another network. So it's um, fine. No Bluetooth by default. You have to install that yourself. I've got a guide showing how you do that. Uh, when it comes to printing, you can see the printer set up by default. So hardware wise, Ubuntu slightly ahead because Bluetooth is installed by default. Now there, software wise, uh, so you can see the menus kind of annoying as well in the sense that you have to keep going down the, the menu tree to find things so if we go to accessories you've got this slide in slide out menu which i'm not overly keen about and uh, it's not that easy to navigate Graphics, you've got quite a few graphics tools. Now I've installed the full version of uh, Q4 OS uh, Trinity, so you get a lot more with it. But you can see this is quite slow and cumbersome trying to find things. Now Chromium is the default web browser. And if you want to, you can drag it down here, I believe, like that. Yeah, you've got Kmail, Mail Client, or Thunderbird, so it's multi layered in terms of applications. Under Multimedia, you've got the Amarok Music Player, and I've installed Super Screen Recorder, and you get VLC. Office, you get the full Libre Office Suite. And that's about it. So for install applications, you click here. So you've got Synaptic the same way as you did for Lubuntu, but you've also got this thing here, which enables you to do install uh, other things. So you can see Flatpak is actually enabled by default, uh, which is interesting. So if you want Chrome, you can do that. Uh, they've also got Chrome as a Debian package, I believe. Now, the difference between Q4 OS and Ubuntu is that Lubuntu is based on Ubuntu and Q4 OS is based on Debian. So you can install Chrome, you can install Brave, uh, you can install the Spotify client. Um, there's a look switcher, which will install. And when you install, it looks like a Windows installer. So like that, you can see it's very, this should appeal to people that were Windows 7 and XP users. I don't know if that's still a thing now. I mean, more and more people are probably used to the, the later Windows versions. Uh, so you've got other things like Zoom, that loaded automatically there. You've got other things, uh, so you've got this Q4 OS Imager, if you want the HP drives, the Falcon web browser, I highly recommend installing that because that's a that's a nice lightweight web browser. Uh, you've got Edge if you want it, Abbey Word. Uh, you've got this easy flat pack for installing flat pack packages, so you can install that. Now, again, as I said, with Lubuntu, do you want flat packs? Um, probably use them at a premium. So don't install every package as a flat pack because it will slow down your machine. Now, if you're wondering about your Bluetooth, you can see here, you've actually got the package you need for setting up Bluetooth right here. So if I install that application now, I don't know why this one's not installed by default, to be honest with you. There's loads of other stuff installed by default. I feel like this is a, a, a miss. Now you have to reboot your computer for that to take effect, which I will do shortly. And if I install this Caden Live, I'll show you what I showed in a previous video. 
So I've rebooted the computer and you can see there is now a Bluetooth icon. So that's Bluetooth enabled. I've also installed Caden Live and this is what I wanted to show you. And I've shown this in a previous video. Now Caden Live is a native app to KDE and therefore tr Trinity, which is what KDE was based off originally, is a fork of, they should work together quite well. But you'll notice all the icons are indeed actually missing from this which is rather annoying. Now I've got another video showing you how you can run Caden Live as a app image. So let's have a look at that look switcher because the desktop's kind of bland at this moment in time. And if we go up here, you can change it to a dark theme if you want. Every time you switch, it's gonna make you log out. You can see that's made it look nicer already. It's a nicer, darker theme. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can choose from a number of different looks. So you can see about half a dozen there, but you can also do show all themes. And there you have a whole host of other themes available to you. Now there is something called DXP Q4 theme that you can install, which makes it look like Windows XP. And uh, uh, that's a, a nice theme if you want to really make your computer look um, old. Now I don't like all this My Document stuff, so I always dispense with this. Uh, it's gonna say, this is a system icon, I don't care. I leave the waste bin and you can icons and sort icons. And what I would do instead is I'd have dolphin and I would add that to the desktop. As a file manager, it's a much better thing to use. If I had to sum up uh, which of the two distros to use for older computers or low spec computers. I think I would go Lubuntu slightly over Q4 OS. Now you've seen I had a few issues with Q4 OS um, and I didn't have any issues with Lubuntu at all. And I just feel like the TDE Trinity desktop is beginning to look a little bit tired. Uh, support for it, how long that's going to continue. I don't like this menu system at all. I'm assuming you can change it out. The Q4 OS KDE is great, but the Trinity desktop, I think I would use Lubuntu over the Q4 OS, unless your computer is severely under spec, which is even worse than this one, in which case then you are limited even more. And because this gives you a little bit lighter, about 300 megabytes idle lighter, then I would go for the the Q4 OS in that instance. But even then we can go lighter again with other distributions and they'll be coming up in other videos. So Lubuntu or Q4 OS Trinity, I would go Lubuntu, uh, but uh, Q4 OS is still uh, pretty decent. I just don't like the uh, Windows theme in part of it anymore. The whole my computer, my documents, my desktop and all this sort of stuff. I, I think they can dispense with that now. We're, we're beyond that. Um, but that's the end of the video. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time on Everyday Linux User.